We're going to get a 3 8 carbide end mill installed in one of our Heimer tool holders here and installed in the Flex CNC. We haven't used it yet, so I got it cleaned off of all the oil. Make note that the tool holder says A3 is for 3 8 We got the machine set for a 3 8 tool. It says use disc number two and A3. So we have our disc number two that we'll install. I'm going to install one of these 3 8 Niagara cutter end mills here. We've got a uh, really nice five flute that I have not used yet. And you can see it's not going down into the tool. Got the coolant sleeve on there, so we'll give that about a minute and it should be cooled down. So we've given it one minute to cool. Let's see. Yep, nice and cool to the touch there. Just a very slight amount of warmth. And whenever I first put the tool in there, what I was doing was I, I, I picked it up and pulled it out of there because I wasn't sure how far it would go down into this tool. Now they do have a set screw built inside this that you can adjust um, the positive stop there if you want to drop your tool in but you can also just kind of hold it in place where you want it and the tool will shrink up and capture it and that does it quickly enough where you can still safely bring it over here and cool it down with the cooling sleeve so that should be a, a good position where we got it there and I may have touched on this the last time I showed the uh, power clamp and doing the heat shrinking and I apologize if I've repeated this before but we've had a lot of people, when I, especially when I shared it on Instagram, asking about the uh, longevity of the tools whenever you go through the, heat, the uh, heating cycles. And as I was uh, taught by Heimer when Rob came and gave me some training on the unit, is if these tools are heated and cooled the way Heimer has engineered their power clamp to do this, it, should, it shouldn't damage these tools whatsoever. And at their testing facility, They've tested these tools up to 2,000 heat cycles, heating and cooling, and it showed no, no damage of the tool there. They said most likely you're gonna wear these tools out before it'll ever 
uh, damage it from all the, the heat cycles there. So just something to think about. I know there's a lot of uh, heat shrink machines out there on the market you can get that are uh, cheaper, you know, less expensive. And I don't think uh, a lot of them work the same way that the Heimer power clamp does because of the, the induction heater focused right here on the tip of that tool and the uh, voltage that's in this machine. It heats it up very quickly so that you can drop the shrink of the tool in there uh, within a matter of about five seconds and then you cool it down and it's uh, good to go. So I know I've heard of people that heat it up with a torch and a uh, air gun and that's not necessarily the right way to do it. Not saying that you can't do it and it's not getting the job done for you. It's just not the correct way to do that because you're going to end up damaging your tools and you also risk messing up the accuracy of your tools as well when you're not evenly heating the material or evenly cooling it there. So just some food for thought there uh, for you guys that are doing some heat shrinking. So right here next to the Heimer power clamp is my Heimer Uno micro set. Excited to be showing this to you. This is something uh, brand new to me and something that I'm still learning. I, I'm still kind of getting familiar with the, uh, the functions of the computer here and uh, all of the things that it'll do, but uh, Rob has showed me the, uh, at least the most basic way to use this machine so that we can get our uh, gauge length, which will be Z, that, that's gonna be your, uh, you know, the height of your tool, and also the diameter of the cutter as well. And what this machine will do is eliminate having to touch off your tools with another system in the machine itself. Now we can certainly verify each one. You know, you can come in here and use the Uno and print it out and then put those coordinates right into you, to the machine whenever you stick the tool into the machine. And then you can go and verify it to see if, uh, if, if they're the same. But we're gonna be using this whenever we install all of our tools and the tool holders and then have, that, have this information right here on the screen that we can put in there. So we'll give you a, a little bit better shot of the machine right there. The Uno Micro Set. And on the screen here, this is probably going to be a little bit uh, tricky to show. I've already got the tool set. I've already went in here and measured and everything. Wanted to make sure I was doing it correctly here. And then I'll uh, show you guys what we're, what we're doing. So you, you take your tool, set it in here, and you have to calibrate it first, which is what I've done. There's a, there's a little hole right here on this piece. And when you first turn the thing on, you have to calibrate it. And then once you get it calibrated to this hole, uh, then you can put your tool in there and start your measuring. So I've got over here on the screen, I've already got it kind of touched off on uh, one of those flutes right there. And then so once you have this, let me see if you guys can see this a little bit better on this side. I think you can kind of see that. You can see we've got some crosshairs there. We've got our little boxes here with an arrow. You have X, which is on radius right now, and then Z, so that's your gauge length. That's from uh, this surface here to the uh, tip of the tool. And that's the two pieces of information that you're gonna be putting into the CNC machine. So now you can just rotate this thing around. If you uh, look, you can see it bring the other flute around. Those crosshairs are gonna kinda follow that, that next flute, and it's gonna continue to measure it. That is a uh, five flute end mill that I put in there, by the way. And one of the interesting things I found about this cutter, this is the second time this has happened. I put this cutter in there thinking that that was a brand new cutter that I never used, but I think I, somewhere along the line I have used that cutter. I just don't remember using it. Because you can see the chips in the flute using this Uno uh, measuring tool right here. You can also, it's really easy to pick up little specks of, uh, dust and uh, you know lint things like that so i've got this little clay bar right here that you use to just try to grab you know those little pieces of trash on there because it will measure that too and give you a false reading so i saw a little speck on there so that's why i was doing that so we'll rotate this guy around there and it's going to measure our our um, our radius and that flute right there let me see if you guys can see that you can see the chips, let me rotate it. Can you see the chips in that cutting edge? Definitely chipped, that's for certain. So 
So you just you continue to rotate it around, and it's going to measure the radius there and uh, give you the diameter. But I think what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to change it to diameter. Hold down on that. I'm going to push diameter. Now it's going to measure the full diameter of the tool. I'm going to start it. Let me. We're just going to start over. Okay, so start it on that. And then what, what you'll see happen is that every one of those edges are going to be off from each other just a little bit. And you're talking about a tenth, maybe, maybe two. So once you rotate it around and it gets to a flute that's actually stuck out a little bit further on your rotation, those uh, crosshairs are going to push. And that's just what it did right there. It pushed those crosshairs a little bit. And you just keep doing that until it um, completely measures the tool the way you want. And I found that it changes maybe a tenth or two every time I come in here and do this. So I got to I got to just kind of get I got to continue to get used to it and make sure that I'm uh, operating it correctly. So this is a good little uh, practice session for me right here. I think we're just going to call that it. Let me see. Let me go back into my. All right. Now we've got we got it in the green box. Green box. That should be about as close as you can get it right there. So I printed this out already, and it's showing four tenths difference. But let me just show you. You can go to print right here, and I'm gonna. This is going to be tool number five five and then output all right and so prints out this little sticker right here that tells you it's a cat 50 tool tool number five and that's giving your uh, x dimension your diameter and then your z uh, link there as well so between those two that i just did this one was before i filmed 0.3744 on your diameter 0.3741 on the diameter. So what I think what I had done on this one, I think it was measuring one of those little specks of dust on there that I hadn't cleaned off yet because it will definitely throw off the diameter. The uh, gauge length is still exactly the same. So I think the, the bottom cutting edge is still, still pretty good. There's a, a quick little crash course into the uh, Uno uh, presetting machine. But we got one more cool little feature there that, uh, that I want to show you before we move on. So let me uh, switch over and show you that. So I was just talking about those uh, chips in the, in the cutting edge. And if you hold down and tap incident light, it, it has it so that you can actually inspect this thing now and see the chips in the, in the cutting edge. So if you rotate it around, I don't know, I hope you guys can see that on the uh, camera there. You can see some chips in the flute right there. That one's got some chips in it. I think there was three that had chips that I saw. That one looks good. That one looks good too. That one looks pretty good too. Maybe it was just two of the flutes then. So you can definitely see it right there. See those chips in it? And as you rotate it around, you'll see some more right in there. And then so it should have been this one as well. So as you rotate around, you can see those chips. That is pretty cool. You can actually, I don't know if it'll help or not, but you can change the intensity a little bit. 
if you need to. I think where they have it set at works pretty good. What else was that? There was a, a backlighting. I think that's uh, to help if you, maybe if you don't have enough light, I think that's what that is for. So we'll have to play around and see. But anyway, I wanted to show you the intensity um, setting on here so that you can actually inspect these things. So again, I, what I thought was a brand new end mill is evidently a used end mill. And that would have been on the, on the little do-all mill at the home shop. But I just, I thought that I never did use that five fluter and just stuck to the, to the four flute. So anyway, uh, pretty cool little setting right there. We can turn that back off and it goes, um, goes right back into your uh, measurements there. We can reset that if you wanted to start over and continue to do your measuring. So once you get a feel for this, it should be a pretty, pretty nice rhythm of coming over here to the power clamp, getting your tool shrunk into the tool holder, and then once it's cool, come right over here to the uh, presetting machine, and that way you can get your X and Z information. And then we will take this, come over here to the flex that's right behind us, stick it into the spindle, and then go over here to our, uh, our tool offsets. This is gonna, gonna end up being uh, tool number five and then you plug in this information in there and it should be good to go. So now that we have our tool installed and uh, preset on the Heimer, we can go ahead and install it in the spindle. Go ahead and let the machine know what tool number that is and then we can take our, our printed off information and uh, plug that into our tool offsets and then we should be ready to go at that point. So once we have our tool installed in the spindle there, then we come over here to the computer to our tool offsets and go ahead and plug in our information for that particular tool number on our uh, tool length. And then you can adjust, of course, the tool wear, which will be your length, uh, the diameter wear. You can change that as you need once you start doing some, some of the machining. Uh, but one of the other things you can do here uh, once you install it after using the Heimer presetter is that we actually have a tool setter mounted on the flex as well and you can use this to kind of verify your measurements. Now, so far we have done this a couple of times, uh, putting some tools in and checking it there. And we're getting some very slight differences within you know a couple of thousandths every time we do that. So because I'm so new at this and I haven't used this stuff really that much, I'm still learning and uh, getting used to these, to these new tools and these new systems. And hopefully as I continue to do it, I'll, I'll be able to understand what's happening here more with our presetter, our tool setter, and plugging our information into the uh, computer there. And we'll become a, a lot more efficient at this kind of stuff as we move forward.
we'll do our check. I've, I've already done it, but I'll show you. I just usually just take a little stone like this and just very lightly stone that edge. That way you've got just a slight amount of little bevel there for the uh, gauge blocks and also it removes the burr off the top of it right there. So just a little trick that I, that I do without trying to um, take a bunch of metal off that edge that will uh, give you error reading on your depth. But here's our gauge block stack up and it's it's fitting in there good. Still have that right amount of uh, friction there on the gauge blocks. So that should be good. And then let me grab my depth mic and see what we're measuring on our depth there. 250 thousandths. I know you can't see that with the GoPro, but that's 250 thousandths. I say we're good to go. It's time to get the, uh, the final shaft in there and let's make our final two cuts. <laughs>